Welcome back to Craftsman David. Today we're building a woodworking project. If you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with other woodworkers who post videos on YouTube, particularly Matthias Wandel. I went to his website, woodgears.com, and I purchased the Jenga pistol plans. And today we're going to build a few of them. So when you go to woodgears.ca and purchase the plans, you can download them right away. And it comes with this full scale printout that has all your pieces and they're at full scale so I can just glue these right on and cut them out it also has the overall assembly at full scale I really like the simplicity of this Jenga pistol because it's only eight parts to make it um, it's been optimized such that it works on three quarter inch stock and it's very simple to build when you buy the plans you also get dimensional drawings of all the pieces so these dimensions are in centimeters and I'm not that familiar with working in centimeters. I, you know, certainly I know what they are, but all my tape measures that I own, all my woodworking scales on my equipment, they're all in inches. So I don't really want to work in millimeters. Uh, and I have two options. I have my calculator here so that I can take the dimensions from these drawings and plug them in and convert them to inches real easy. I also, since this is full scale, can just take the dimensions right off of this and take it over to my equipment or whatever I need to do. So you're going to see me do a little of both as I'm building this project. I started by planting some scraps of oak down to a quarter inch thick. These thin pieces will become the runners that the bolt slides back and forth on. After both faces were cleaned up, I moved to the edges on the jointer, and then on the table saw I ripped them to width, and I also used the crosscut sled to cut them to length. Okay, now I'm just looking at the four pieces left that I have to get out of this piece of scrap. And it looks like if I cut this into strips, I can make several of each one of these. And ta-da! Here's all my blanks cut. I did have to add to it because I'm making more than one Jenga pistol. But I have the grip, the muzzle, the bolt, and the trigger stock all ready to go. So when you look at this, a lot of these pieces have notches. And my goal is to cut these notches out on the table saw with a dado stack. Now there's really two sets of notches, so I need one that's tight to them for gluing it up because this gets glued into the handle and into the muzzle. Um, but the bolt and the trigger need to have clearance, so that's going to be a wider stack setup. So I'm going to do this in two setups, and first I'm going to cut these blocks to length and that way I can dado all this out at the, at the same time. So here I go again using the miter gauge to cut the blocks to length. I need a groove that goes straight on, so I made this little jig to help me cut this safely. I used the stock that I'm actually going to fit into the groove as my height gauge for how tall to make it. I've already tested the dado, and here I go cutting the first groove. But did it turn out alright? Oh, look at that. Perfectly flush. And I'll use the same setup to knock out the rest of them. I'm using a similar jig to cut the groove in the handles. I made this jig by screwing some squares down to a board that gets clamped to the miter gauge. As you can see, the dado blade is pretty far above the table, so I want to keep my hands away. So now I've run test cuts and I'm going to create the profile for the bolt. This dado stack is wider, which will give me the clearance I need. Then I can cut all the bolt pieces to length. Okay, all the raw blanks are done from the table saw. I got enough pieces here to at least make 10 of them. So now I got the muzzle drilling operation set up with a stop block and my fence, and I'll just drill these out. After drilling, I can use the same setup with the countersink fit. So what I've done is I've deburred the one side of the hole. On the opposite side, I've made a funnel so that when the pin hits, it'll go into the hole, hopefully, and not deflect. To make the pistol grip, I have to cut out a profile, so I started with the paper pattern, I glued it on, I cut one out, now I'm happy with this one, so I'm going to make a, this one the pattern, with double stick tape on the back, and I can tape it to the next one. The bulk of the material can be removed at the scroll saw. Normally I'd use my band saw, but it's currently not operational. And the rest of the material I'll take off here at the router table, I've got my flush trim bit installed. I'm going to do this corner round over and I'm going to do this profile but I'm not going to do this round over corner because uh, this is the wrong direction. I don't want to feed from end grain to face grain. So I'll leave that and I'll do that at the sander later. And I'll get this last corner here at the belt sander. 
Now I've switched to an eighth inch round over bit and I'm just going to ease over all the edges. Okay, now I'm going to glue up sub-assemblies of these four pieces. I've got the grip, I've got the lower rail that fits in there, I've got the spacer that fits in on top of that, and I've got the muzzle that goes on this end, and i got to make sure I keep my funnel towards the inside where the bolt's going to hit it. I'm just a little anxious to see how well the bolt fits on the slide rails, so it's going to go together something like this, and it seems to slide pretty easy. Oh yeah, that's going to be perfect. Next, I'm working on the trigger pieces. These were kind of a complicated piece, so I'm cutting them out one at a time by gluing paper on the wood and scroll sawing them. After cutting them out, each of them got smoothed at the belt sander, the strip sander, and finally smoothed over at the router table. And I got one trigger cut out, lots more to go. And I'll drill the pivot hole on the trigger before removing the paper. That way the mark doesn't get lost in sanding. Now I'm going to start working on the bolt, starting with the firing pin, which I've taken measurements off this drawing. It's kind of annoying, these dowels are so small that every time I cut one off, the blade grabs it and takes it down the hole. Don't worry though, I eventually got all those dowels cut. Here at the strip sander I'm putting a rounded point on it so that it fits through the hole easier. The pins strike the Jenga block so they'll never see tension inside the bolt. A few drops of glue and tapping them in is all it takes. No clamps required. And per the plans, I use the same 5 16 dowel for the pin as I do in this joint to strengthen it so that when this whacks it, it doesn't break it off. A belt sander makes quick work of cleaning up that dowel joint. There, now that's nice and smooth on both sides. I use the pattern to mark out the rubber band slot with a utility knife. This way I don't have to glue it on. But if I had to do it again, I think I would wait to round the corners on this block until after it's assembled, because it makes it really tippy trying to hold it on the saw. I use the rotary tool to smooth over the corners on each rubber band slot. This way the rubber doesn't get cut on the corner of that wood. I got all the parts laid out here. You see I had to make a few jigs. I'm going to use spray lacquer to give these a little coat of finish. They just need light protection. Here's all those pieces after three coats of spray lacquer. Ready to move on to assembly. So I've got some paste wax and I'm going to apply that to both the main rail here and also the top rail. That'll just make it a little more slippery so that that bolt moves a little more easily. And then with a fresh cloth, buff it out. Now to assemble these, the first step is to fasten down this top rail. So I've gotten a bolt in here, and I got the top rail on, and I want to check to make sure that it moves smoothly, and that this bolt hits that hole every time. This one does. So I've got a countersink bit installed in my cordless drill. I'm going to find what looks to be the exact center of this. So I tried before just running the screw in and I had some problems splitting this top rail because it's so small. So I'm going to ream that out with a bigger bit that's just a little bit under the thread size. And I'm going to go one step further and take this out and take an even bigger drill bit and ream out the holes that are in this piece. Now I can run my two screws in. And there you have it. I can't have the trigger flat against this bottom rail, otherwise it won't pivot. So just by eye, I'm going to pull the back end of this trigger down a little bit, to give myself a little clearance. So I'm just going to hold it there while I drill through on the same hole that we drilled earlier. Next, with the trigger pulled off, I'm going to take the next size up, a 5 32nd drill bit, and I'm going to drill through this all the way. So with the brads that I'm using, it does not fit through a 1 16th hole, so that'll be a little bit of a friction. And then the 5 32nd, it does fit through, that way the trigger can pivot on that. My brad nails were just a little too long, so I had to snip them shorter, and then I used this trick to put a point back on it at the strip sand. I want the head just proud of that trigger. I don't actually want to bury the head because that would give me too much friction. All I need now are rubber bands. To install the rubber bands, that top rail needs to be removed. 
This is why we use screws on that joint. Notice how many rubber bands I'm putting on here. It's actually a bit much, as I'll find out later. In order for this to work, the trigger one has to be flipped so that the cross actually holds on the trigger. Give it a try. Okay, let's try that again with about half the rubber bands, half the power. So that's how it's supposed to work. So no, don't go overpowered on these. Just a couple rubber bands is all you're going to need. And it's also a lot more difficult to control than I imagined. You really have to hold it steady and get it just the right distance away to get it to knock out just one Jenga block. It really brings a new element to the game of Jenga, having to have your aim dead on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I made several of these that I'm going to give away as gifts. Um, if you want the plans for this, I cannot put them in the description because I paid for them. If you'd like a set of plans, please head over to woodgears.ca and find Matthias Wandel's store. He sells the plans. Also, Matthias, if you watch this video, thanks for the plans. I think they worked out pretty well. Have a good night. Emily, try it out. Nice job.